Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick warning before we begin. In today's first story there is mention of partner abuse, so if that is a topic that makes you uncomfortable, you might want to skip the story. Now let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user MicroPretzel. My 33 female sister 23 female is marrying a gaping a-hole 33 male. I'm completely lost. Well, crap. I'm posting here because I've exhausted all other avenues of advice. Somebody out there must have gone through similar situations and I humbly seek the benefit of your collective wisdom. And holy crap, I need it. And let me preface this by saying, I know my little sister is now an adult. I can't make her decisions for her. I know it. This is one of those some things you just can't change kind of things. But damn, I just don't know how to deal. So for future references, I'll call my sister's partner Dude. My sister met Dude a couple of years ago. We all lived together then and she'd bring him by the house to hang out with the rest of us. At first, he seemed alright. He tried uncomfortably too hard on first impressions, but who doesn't when they're meeting a new family, no? It's all good. But gradually, as he became more comfortable with us, us being me, our brothers, mother and grandmother, we started getting uncomfortable with him. Little red flags here and there. Dude never shows up without a bottle of vodka. We thought he was just being a good guest at the time. Dude had a full-time job and financial support from back home, but sports an electric benefits transfer card. But that's not all. Dude doesn't read. Dude listens to the crappiest of crappy music. Dude believes in astrology. Little red flags, but nothing too terrifying. We all have our faults and opinions, and we welcomed him in. I even defended him a few times in private when the first I don't know about this guy conversation started. And then some big red flags showed up and it was harder not to judge. Dude was a former meth addict. Dude had a record, a felony for either assault or domestic violence with a girlfriend, based on his very short synopsis of one night after too much liquor. Dude convinces my sister to move out of our house while she's still on the lease and move into a rat hole an hour away because he waited until the last second to shop for apartments and nothing closer was available. Dude starts openly criticizing family members in front of other family members. Dude has a serious drinking problem and denies it to this day. Dude is caught in a couple of big lies. Dude likes to take my sister outside the house away from us when they're over to discuss her tone. And on and on. Seriously, there are more big ones even, but I'm depressing myself typing them and it doesn't matter. Let's just say we know the guy now and he's a massive alcoholic lying manipulative craphead one or two short-sighted flaming shots away from a YouTube video. And my sister is marrying him and she loves him. The whole damn family told her to be careful. A few of us straight up said, please don't do this to yourself with the caveat being that it's still her decision and we'll love her just the same. He found out about this and things got heated, things were said. He tried his passive aggressive BS on me and I laid into the guy. I told this effer exactly what I think about him, but in the end it didn't matter. He'd got what he wanted, after all. We made peace around Christmas. Meanwhile, I'm worried about my sister. Me and F head, also known as dude, well, we're cordial and correct, but I avoid that guy like the plague and it's killing me. I don't want to attend whatever wedding he's planning. I don't want to call him a brother. I don't want anything to do with this mother effer. The rest of the family have similar sentiments, but they seem to be doing better than me. We just stew in it. Hell, I've seen Meet the Parents. I know how this is supposed to work. To him, we're just a crappy in-laws and nothing will ever be good enough. But this isn't about this guy. It's not even about my sister, really. We told her how we feel, repeatedly and in various states of alarm. And we got our answer. It's about me. How do I learn to deal with it? What does that acceptance stage really look like? And how do I get to it? Oh man, OP, your sister's in a really crappy situation. I am so sorry she's in that kind of relationship. But as you say, she is an adult and everybody has tried to warn her. And it's not like you can kidnap her to prove a point or anything like that because it wouldn't work. It's just one of those situations in life that 
go beyond the scope of your control. And unfortunately for you, OP, I don't think you'll ever get to the acceptance stage because you're not going through the grief of loss. Your sister is very much alive and she can still be recovered. But it is an incredibly difficult situation because she's living with the source of the toxicity. So this guy's gonna have her ear full time. And anything that you say, he can try to spin it as, see, your family's toxic, they're trying to break us apart and blah, 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 blah and then he's going to burn the bridge between you and your sister. So even though this is not what we would like to do at all, the only thing we can do is keep avoiding this guy like the plague and keep as many lines open with your sister as possible. Because at some point she might need your help and you need to jump on it. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they had to say. Deleted says, this is not a case where confrontation will work. If you confront them anymore, it will become a them against a world dynamic. And that is the cesspool in which abuse happens. My advice would be to limit contact with the fiance, but continue to be there for your sister. Set up a weekly girl time or something with her. Then when crap hits the fan, as it eventually will, you will be there for your sister to fall back on. You want your sister to feel like you are on her side. Attacking her fiancé will not make her feel that way. And Opie responds, I like the girl time idea. I think I've been avoiding contact entirely too much for fear of saying something about a-hole she won't like and that's killing me too. We used to be close. Jay Palan says, it's in your best interest to remain quietly supportive now and to wait for her to decide she hates them, and then you can make it clear that you're in support of her. This does sound hard as hell. This guy sounds like a world-class user and a douche, but realistically, there is very little you can do to change your sister's mind. So what you need to do is avoid burning bridges while she's infatuated with this lying sack of crap. And OP responds, burning bridges is a good term I needed to hear. My biggest worry is that one day she will wise up and break it off, but she'll still be pissed at me for ever trying to interfere. Another deleted says, I went through this with my older sister, but her husband found out that we all hated him, so he banned us, especially me, from their house. The only time we got to see her was when she would travel alone. Then, when she wised up about him and wanted divorce, I was one of the last people to find out because she didn't want her little sister to have been right about their relationship. I wish I could have a do-over and maybe if I hadn't been such a douche about it, she would have felt like she could talk to me about it more and not been as embarrassed and maybe left him sooner. I just didn't know. I didn't have our slash relationships back then and I was just a young girl who loved her older sister and didn't want to see her get hurt. So I said some regretful things. Don't make my mistakes. Don't isolate her from her support system because you hate her choice. Ugh. I'm really sad for you right now and really sad for my sister and my younger self right now. Tough times. And Primal Matter says, this sounds like a typical beginning to an abusive relationship. And OP responds, that's what scares me. I've had friends go through similar relationships and they never ended well, even other family members. But my convincing her can only go for so long before it just sounds resentful and mean. Eventually, I had to shut up. Additional information from OP's comments. The reason I came to r slash relationships for help is because I've been trying mindfulness techniques for about two weeks. I found I'm not very good at them, but I am going to keep at it. And it's through that practice that I found that this was the big thing on my mind that refused to go away, if that makes any sense. The thought of this guy screwing up my sister's life is that always present annoying mosquito in my ear that I can't seem to stop. This whole thing is really nuts. I love my sister so much. She has always been smart as hell, really bright, but not always great at choosing partners, mostly because of lack of choices, I think. She is attractive and she's fun as hell to hang out with. What scares me the most now is she's becoming more and more like this guy rather than herself. It's like his interests, he only has a couple, have become her interests and I don't see her exploring much else. We have talked, we used to be tight, but she just sort of trails off with, I know, but he's nice. That's basically how all our conversations go. Mostly it's me asking if she's alright. I'll mention something he did that seemed to upset her. I'll mention it pissed me off. 
She doesn't defend him much more than, he's really nice though, or more worrying, I know, but I can handle myself if he's ever a douche. I don't want to press it too much if she tells me not to, but admittedly, mostly it's me talking and her listening. She never got angry at me for talking with her about things. Some of you are saying that the best way to support my sister would be to try to tolerate him, and I'm willing to do that. But what does support like that look like? Do I just pretend to like the effort? Is that support? Sometimes I worry that if I don't mention something, it's the omission that becomes dishonest might be the right word. It makes it hard to be around them. All I'm doing is trying my damnest not to scream at the guy, so I avoid him instead. I hear you on waiting it out and hoping for the best. I will try, but F this crap is hard. Well, the community is in agreement. This is a horrible and hard situation, but there's nothing OP can actively do to avoid her sister being with this douche, so apparently she's ready to bite her tongue and support her sister. Which means it's time for us to move on to the update to see how this story ends. But of course, before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with the update. It's been a few months since that post and a great deal has gone down since. So the consensus recommendation was to back off and just be there for her. I really took that to heart and the short of it is she left him. Also, he was far worse than any of us truly realized and we already hated the bastard, so that's saying something. So ready to get angry? This mother effer systematically destroyed things my sister owned, sometimes in front of her, either because they were gifts from past relationships or things that we made for her. He ripped up a one-of-a-kind poster her ex made for her, a cartoon depiction of her inside her favorite TV show, and said he was baffled that she thought he could keep it. He started pushing ideas like that we were all her past and he was her future, you see. He told her she could destroy the things he had kept from his exes. She didn't want anything destroyed. She thought she was dating an adult after all. Our mom crocheted her a teddy bear. He would take it from her and throw it across the room, replacing it with a stuffed animal he gave her. This was seen as playful at first, until one day the stuffed bear disappeared. He destroyed it. I gave her a flash drive with a bunch of Arabic lessons in MP3 because she wanted to learn a new language. It was for her birthday. He took it from her and wouldn't let her use it on their personal computer because I probably put a virus on it or something. This a-hole posted naked photos of his ex online and when my sister found out and got understandably pissed, he gaslit and made her feel stupid for being mad. He was an unrepentant drunk who would get angry if she didn't drink with him, even saying at one point she was a different person when she didn't drink, more mean and more critical. I mean, he even told his own mother he hadn't had a drink in three years since his time in rehab. My sister and the rest of us knew he drank every day. His mother paid for his side of everything, rent, bills, groceries, etc. He spent it on vodka. She only supports him because she's so proud of him for quitting drinking. He also told his mother the reason he hasn't had a job in years is that he can no longer drive because he has something called pre-diabetes, which he looked up on Google. In truth, his only health problem is he does nothing but watch baseball on his laptop all day and drink liter upon liter of vodka. He drives to the liquor store every day trying to avoid another DUI. I think his biggest mental hold on my sister was when he told her that if a doctor told him he needed to stop drinking for health reasons, he would, but only with her help. Otherwise, if she left him, he wouldn't go to the doctor, he wouldn't stop drinking, and she would be to blame. Now, in the last couple of months, our grandmother has gone from heart attack to incurable heart failure. My sister flew back to be with us and to be with her grandma. I'm the primary caregiver of her hospice care here at the house and my sister has helped me every step of the way. When we discovered she wasn't going to get better, Douchehole tells my sister that she needs to come back now because she was going to die anyway and she has responsibilities with her new family. She insisted that she was needed here. 
Oh right, yeah, I bet you are doing a lot. You're practically a saint. You need to come back now so you can pay your bills, said the unemployed man-child. She confesses to me she's considering leaving him. They have an argument, she hangs up, he calls again and again before leaving a voicemail saying that if she doesn't answer his phone call in 10 minutes, he's going to report the phone he gave her and the wedding ring stolen to the police and have her arrested. This is all happening while our grandma is saying her goodbyes to the out-of-state family members that flew in to see her one last time. So my sister flies back there to get her stuff and he sabotages her return trip, physically preventing her from making her flight by holding her down on the couch when Uber shows up. Desperate, she goes from neighbor to neighbor asking for a ride to the airport as he stands behind her, shaking his head and telling people to ignore her, she's drunk. He then agrees to pay for another plane ticket under threat of a kidnapping charge. No idea if that would have worked or not, but with his record, I think he wanted to avoid police intervention. But before she leaves the next day, he steals most of the things from her purse she would need for the flight. Her ID, her bank card, and irreplaceable jewelry with no value other than its history in our family. She finds most of it before she leaves. He still has the rest and refuses to give it back, saying, It wasn't illegal for me to take your necklace because your name is on the lease. My sister has been looking and applying for jobs over here, but this a-hole accessed her email account and changed her password. The secondary protection texted him the confirmation code as they were together, so all the application replies or possible interviews are now locked in her inbox and here he is calling her petty and refuses to give the new password because she didn't treat him with enough respect. And that's not even everything. He then used control over her email to gain control of her Facebook account and is now posting on it. At the moment, she just wants her stuff back. She wants to move on. She wants him to grow up. She wants him to do well and stop drinking. He seems to want to make her life as difficult as possible. And I have wanted so badly to text this mother effer and get him to try that bully crap on me and see what happens. But what good would it do? I've stayed out of this entirely. Taking care of grandma has been my job 24-7 with no time for his BS anyway. Even venting to you guys right now is a nice break from all that. He refuses to see himself as anything but a victim in this whole unfortunate affair and nothing I say is going to change that. I'll be honest, when I found out how much of an f-ball this dude really was, I wanted him to feel as poorly as he made her feel. I wanted justice, you know? Right now, we'd settle for him giving her stuff back and her email account, and poking himself on the penis with a 9B graphite pencil. All in all, thank you guys, you were right. Opie's edit. I am sensing a theme to your comments. We have a few reasons we haven't called the cops yet. He's a thousand miles away. We call the local police department there to secure her things and he denies everything, then hides and destroys things in retaliation. She has no one there to collect her things or even to verify everything is present. She is home and safe. We were hoping we could all be adults and he could just admit mistakes were made without admitting guilt and send her things, cash on delivery. He denies any wrongdoing whatsoever. With this, I mean that he's entirely open with guilt over the phone, but in text, he denies everything. So most of what we have, true or not, is hearsay. What would the cops do in this situation? He's also posting on her Facebook that she blindsided him by leaving and she had no reason. He tells their friends that she has now abandoned their lease and ruined his life. She's still not sure how to handle the lease situation. I would love to call the police, but I don't expect a good outcome. If you've been in similar situations, I'd be grateful for some solutions in that direction. Believe me, I hear you. What he has done was effed up and beyond illegal, but we have no money. Dealing with the care of our grandmother has left us in deeper financial difficulty, even with hospice and Medicare footing the bill for most of it. Getting out there to get her stuff back seems impossible at the moment. Also, as I said before, he now controls her Facebook as well, which included messages where he admitted to taking control of her email. She is terrified of what he might post and we are going through all measures necessary to get it back. Opie's edit too. I get what many are saying. We can't just expect anything to happen without us taking action after all. Some have suggested going to the local police first for advice on what we'll need to build a case. I really like that and I think if we act quickly, at least it's a step forward. 
Also, thanks for the tip about using a police report to try to get the email back. Alright, well, I'm gonna call this a very positive update. Still not happy because, well, sister needs her stuff back and they're getting there. Apparently, OP's got some good ideas on how to approach the police about this. But the big win here, of course, is that the little sister is out of that toxic relationship and dude, or douche, is out of her life. So here's wishing you, OP, and your family all the best in the future. Take care and thank you for sharing. Now, how about we squeeze in a mood booster post? This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user I need a tiny llama, don't we all? The doctor I worked for paid hundreds of dollars to eat dinner leftovers. I worked for an orthopedic surgeon who constantly ate people's lunches and would leave $10 on the fridge. He really loved leftover home-cooked meals. He would say, I don't get lunches off, I have to work to keep paying your salary, you can go buy another lunch. I hated him so much, but I got paid a lot. He was fresh out of his internship and residency and he thought he was above everyone. We complained to the office manager. She went to the doctor and said we were all pissed about it. The doctor told her to deal with it. If the doctor decided to eat one of our lunches, we could have the office manager just order us something. This was amazing. There were two people besides me that had family and kids, so we always brought leftovers. If he ate my food, I ordered from the most expensive steak place in town. Appetizers, 22 ounce steaks, three sides, a salad and dessert. I'd eat the salad and the rest went home. And of course, there are plenty of leftovers to take to work the next day. The rest of the staff was doing the same. Ordering full chickens, four to five different Chinese dishes, spending hundreds of dollars to replace stolen meatloaf sandwiches and day old soups and spaghetti. The office manager went along with it. After all, he said we could order what we wanted if he took our lunch. It went on for two months until douchehead doctor caught on. From then on, he had the office manager order him lunch. I did miss trading off a cold pork chop and Spanish rice for prime rib and all the fixings. Well, that's what you get for being a self-important douche taking other people's private property. Good on you, OP. Hopefully you enjoyed all that awesome food. Take care, OP, and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.